here's the thing. I don't particularly like using Photo Etch. I'm not the biggest fan of using resin 3D print either. And I've never, ever made a C diorama before. Today's build of HMS Devonshire really could be a triumph of hope over experience. Find out how I get on right here on Gary's Stuff. Hello there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Indeed, today I am building the 1 600th scale kit of HMS Devonshire released by Airfix. It's a 2022 release of a 1963 kit, part of their Vintage Classics range. I'm also adding a load of photo etched accessory detail and some 3D printed resin as well. It's going to be a bumpy ride, and to make it even bumpier, I'm doing my first ever C diorama. Now, if you uh, just want to hang around and see how on earth I get on with it, that's great. This is the video for you. If you are thinking, well, maybe I could do some of that and want to know what you get in the box of the kit and what the photo and resin look like, then there's already a box opening video on my channel. Anything you see on the channel, please do. Give it the old imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published. Now, if you'd like to make a bit more of a concrete contribution to the channel, you can do that through Super Thanks, by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online affiliate programs. One of these is the Airfix program. If you're not going to go to your local independent retailer, then you might want to buy something online. If you do, go through the link in the information box below. Then whatever you buy, Airfix at no extra cost to you will make a donation to the running of this channel. And you can still get your Airfix Club 10% discount if you are a member. And of course, you can either collect or spend your hobby reward points as well. Let's make a start then on building the 1 600th scale HMS Devonshire, a vintage classics release from Airfix. Right, so here we go, starting our HMS Devonshire. How exciting. Now, it's going to be a waterline, essentially a waterline model. It's going to have some hull, probably. I need to keep some of the hull showing. But most of it is going to be, um, well, some of it's going to be cut off. Most of that, the, the lower hull is going to be cut off, let's see. First thing to do, though, obviously, is to join the two whole sides together. Now, that's from what I remember of Airfix ships of old. It's going to be a lot easier said than necessarily done. I think I need to tape at each of these these points let me get some right so i think to join them together the the thing to do from what i remember the old days is to just sort of grab them grab them at these uh posts first just get that it's so difficult the rest of it's going to feel really easy. I think maybe that's that's the the idea. So everything from now on feels relatively easy once you got the hull actually vaguely together. The rest of the kit probably is quite straightforward. <laughs> oh, the triumph of hope over experience. Oh goodness me. I mean, I know it's a vintage classic, but really, this is absolutely terrible. There we go. Starting to get control of the thing now. Slowly but surely. I think this is the, the keys to trap it. Like this. 
trap it on something flat so it can't run away. I think we're going to need a lot more tape than that. There we go. Finally got it submitting. Um, what we also need to do is put the main deck element in. That sort of stabilizes the whole build, the whole ship. And also when we do get around to cutting the um, hull down. Actually, I don't know whether we will. I might, might just, yeah, I might see if I can just do it without cutting the hull down at all. Um, anyway, when, when we come, to, if we do cut the hull down, um, it's going to need some more structure and some more support that way. So the deck needs to go in. So the main deck is one single piece that goes in around here and it again is going to take some clamping and some persuading. Okay. It certainly takes some taping. I'll be back in a minute. So there we go, glue that up and then leave it alone. There's a set of stairs that go back from the flight deck to the know, is it a quarter deck at the rear, I think. Maybe they have quarter decks these days on ships. I don't know. Anyway, it goes from the back end of the flight deck, which is here. It goes down to the deck where the sea slug missile launcher is going to be. Now the kit comes with a sea slug launcher but it's basically just a box that looks awful um, and there's a photo etch, uh, no sorry resin part I've got to um, improve it with. Apparently that goes in there first okay cool. Yeah, that's the, uh, I'm going to call it a quarter deck, I'll find out. No doubt, I will find out one way or another what it's actually called. That's where that's going. And so the uh, sea slug launcher is here. Uh, the rear jack for the, no, that's, that's where the, the white ensign goes. And so the front end is where the, the jack goes, Union Jack, because it's on a ship and therefore not just a flag. And the ensign goes at the back, I believe. And it's just trying to get it right. There we go. We'll fill in all the all these little gaps and bits and pieces later on. Okay. Let's uh, tape it up, glue it up, and leave it alone. The funnels come in two halves, like so. Then each of them has a cap piece that sits on, like this. I'll just glue that into place. Then the funnels can go onto the ship. These flying bridges sit here as well. Go in. So like that. Then there's a piece of superstructure here that goes on. So, and this is the base of the um, forward mast. Now the mast comes in two pieces, um, which you glue together, two halves, and then you put into the mounting here. Now I don't know how much of all this I actually need to keep, and how much gets thrown away with the when I do the photo etch. So I'll err on the side of caution 
and actually I'll take that off and take that bottom bit off because that's not helping at all. I'll err on the side of caution there and um, leave it on. I can always cut stuff off later on. Let's get it lined up before and after. There we go. Main mast is the same, it comes in two halves. We'll glue those up together first, then we'll put them put the mast on the ship. It goes amidships. See I'm learning all this new stuff, all these new phrases now. A midship forward main mast. Then that can go amidships like so. There we go. Now, as far as I can tell, that's as much of the original plastic as this kit is going to use. Everything else from now on is going to be either resin or photo etch. So I'm just going to um, tighten up some of these seams, make sure everything's OK and let that set. And then I'll start tackling some bits of resin. So before I do anything more major with the ship, we've got it roughly how it's going to be in before photo etch. So I can start adding bits of photo etch and resin soon and start painting bits and stuff. I just wanted to cut this part piece of foam out. It's just a piece of foam in a picture frame. I've covered the edges of the picture frame with tape to protect them. So this will sit in here like so. Um, and this gives me a position and then layout to start thinking about putting some uh, waves in here. I'll be using clay, modeling clay, air drying ones to uh, do that while I'm then working on the ship to make it look right. And the idea is that when it's all done, this can just sort of come and sit inside the, the hole that the clay's made and then I can just tidy up some of the edges here with a bit of um, acrylic. Anyway, I'll start laying down some clay. Before I start, I'll just rough up the surface a bit so the clay has got something to bind to, otherwise it won't stick to this quite... Um, this is like a paper-covered foam. And if it hasn't got a key into the surface, it won't stick properly, so... just distresses a little bit as they say then you can just sort of push the clay into place it's not going to be that thick a layer I have to say because um, well it doesn't need to be and only sort of like um, pound coin or something thickness you know like three or four mil three mil if that two or three two Maybe about two millimetres, most of it, actually. It's going to dry quite quickly. Um, but we just want to make sure it actually covers. It binds in. Give it a good shove in. And make sure it binds in. Um, and we can start also putting in some little bits of texture. We're going to put in the majority of the actual texturing in a little while once we've got all this down. Two, three. Okay, I can't put it off any longer, so I'm going to have to start on the photo etch. Now, the first thing we are going to do is the uh, chaff dispenser position. There's a uh, chaff launchers um, on each side. Now, this is the platform here, and then these two levels. That sits on that, and that sits on that. However, between these, you need some half mil plastic cardamom. Okay, so what I need to do now is just put a bit of super glue on this part. So then put some of the half mil plastic on top. So it covers the brass. That's the important bit. So and the same on the other side. Okay. 
I use um, high viscosity super glue because it gives me like 20 30 seconds to move stuff around before it's absolutely set. So I can just realign this. There we go. I let that set now, and then when it's when it's completely set, and just cut around the brass, and that will give me the lift of that piece I need. And just do the same with the other piece that we have as well. Okay then. So we put some glue on this part here. You see, there's like a guide there. The reason why I use the high viscosity stuff is you can actually move it for a little bit. Got about 20, 20 to 30 seconds before it sets. So that's cool. That's good. And then we just add the top layer. Okay, so that can go on the ship, um, put some uh, guardrails around it as well, which will be a bit of a, an interesting job at this scale, but nevertheless, got to be done. Yeah, I'm not happy with that, not quite happy with it. Yeah, more like that. Good. The I've put the launcher on the ship now. It's um, next to the forward funnel. You can see the line of the this line of the the base here follows the line of the superstructure here, and I think the this line defines where the edges where these um, built up bits are. So there's just this platform hanging out over the edge essentially. Um, none of this structure here. So that's what I have done. The launcher goes in there. The railings will go on when I do the railings to the rest of the deck. What I've got to do now is the other side. I'm going to put the um, replacement resin gun turrets on. I'm going to leave the gun barrels until this thing's all painted up at the front. The only... Um, and the criticism I have is that the pin on the base of the uh, gun turret is much, much smaller than the hole in the kit. So you have to sort of center it yourself. But other than that, it's much, much nicer. Incidentally, if you are building this, but you want to do it as um, the Glamorgan or one of the ships fitted with Exocet in, in place of B turret, uh, the Starling model set does come with the extra set boxes that sit here as well. Look at that sea slug launcher, isn't it beautiful? And sea cat launchers as well. 20 mil guns, ribs, those are the gun barrels. They give you six because they think probably you're going to mess up a couple. So, you know, they give you a few spares here and there for various things. Those are the, um, and you need two of those, those are the chaff dispensers that are going up in here at some point as well. Now on the uh, photo sheet, you've got a load of railings here and these are the bits you can just chop out to do bits and pieces around. So I need say three sections of railing to go around my chaff dispenser. I think that's the first time I've ever said that. And while it's easier to cut the PE on my uh, tile base it is definitely a lot easier to fold the PE when it's on my cutting mat because it doesn't move on the um, on the tile it just moves around a bit too much get that, that, get under there. let's give it a bit of a bend don't put too much bend on because I want to sort of mold it around the thing 
and I don't know what the angle is exactly just yet so I'll underdo it for the moment and then I can refine it when I get to the ship when I get on board as it were there we go okay that will do for the moment I should show you notice it's also I'm using much smaller pair of tweezers now there we go so that's that and that has got to fit onto my chaff dispenser so this is the chaff dispenser deck I created from photo etch and plastic I'm just going to that much put some um, some super glue on there cyanoacrylate glue quite a little uh, exercise this So poke up quite a way, as it were. Okay, well, I'm going to leave. Pull that out a little bit further. That's that's it. Right now, I'm going to leave that to set like that, and then when it's set at the front, I can pull these two wings in to the edges like that. But I'll leave that to set first because trying to get that angle first and fit them around bits of thing I haven't sanded off properly is a nightmare. So I'll just leave those to set, that to set, and then pull the two sides in. Then when the rails are set, I'll put in the draft dispenser. This is a piece of resin. It says on there you should put Ratings on the back as well, but I'm not sure. Um, I think it looks silly, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know how scale it is and stuff like that. So, no, I'll leave it as it is. I'll leave it as it is. Incidentally, you'll notice they give you there's another, there's three chaff dispensers on here. You actually only need two. That's in case you mess up getting them off the uh, base which I think is very good now for the for the railings I'm using um, high viscosity super glue this is just because it's got a bit more grab to it you know it just it's not as liquid as the other stuff as your normal stuff it does take a bit longer to set it takes about 30 seconds to set on a normal day um, it's a bit cold here today so it might take just that little bit longer but the point is, it, it actually has a bit of grip to it. Regular super glue, I find, you know, you, you put it on, and if you haven't got it exactly right there and then, um, and all the faces that clean, da 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 da, da it, it either grips straight away or it doesn't. Whereas this actually does grip for a while. So, put that on. as I said, it does take about 30 seconds to go off, but it gives you time to just adjust the way things are sitting, like so. The resin 20mm gun can go on as well, one on each side. Okay, so that's pretty much the um, forward part dealt with. Um, this may need to be trimmed when we put the derricks in for the boat here. Yeah, that's fine on that side. Everything's in place. There's the uh, direction finding aerial on its mast at the front here. There's uh, all the railings pretty much that should be there are there. The uh, chaff dispensers are there and the 20 mil cannon are there as well and there's some um, aerials on top of the funnel here of course what we need to do next is well at some point anyway the foremast i think next i will probably do uh, this sort of area and see what i need to do there at some point of course we're gonna have to uh, spray it all and paint it but for now that that's where we are i'm not the biggest fan of photo etch as you know um, and 
they very kindly these days Starling have made a superb sea slug launcher um, which I won't show you because it involves you'll see it in a bit later anyway however sadly they haven't done the um, type 965 radar in 3D yet so I have to make it out of photo etch and I have to say this is not my favourite thing to do so we have this is just a single radar you know later on they had the what they call the double bedstead had two of these arrays stacked one on top of the other for this slightly earlier version I'm sticking to the single array partly because I don't want to send myself completely bonkers uh, each of these little there's eight of these these little segments and they all line up on here then there's a backboard as well and a couple of bits on these so 12 pieces to make the radar at the top one thing I will point out about photo etch is you have to be rigorous at cleaning the parts now you can see here just here it's the tiniest little stem from the one of the frames joining this part to the main uh, body of the etch just one tiny little support from a tiny little nub that will stop this part sticking properly to the other so you have to make sure you clean every little one of these nubs all the way down sometimes you can get them with a very sharp knife sometimes you uh, put them into some pliers um, with this surface just on the top of the plier between the jaws then you can sand them off but at this scale probably just attacking them with a decent knife is probably the best way I tend to use my um, chisel blade because I find it easier to sort of place and then just rock it to cut but it really really does need every bit taken off there we go, like that I've primed the clay with just with grey primer and now I'm going to put on some Tamiya sea blue it's called it's very dark blue what I've done now is just Put some sort of random spraying, sort of a slightly paler brown. Use this um, ICM dark blue on top, and then I've done some of this deep sky blue along the wave lines here, the wake lines, and in the wake itself here, just to give a bit of sort of structure to these. These are obviously going to be a bit more prominent when we've done the. Um, the gels and everything else, but that's that's a start of sort of a, an undercoat if you like pre-shading if you will Now I can start adding the clear Acrylic on top just paint it on Worry about being too Accurate because it doesn't dry that quickly <laughs> Got plenty of time to be playing with this This is just the first layer, by the way. There's going to be several more, um, not least of which once we've actually put the ship in. But this is just like a base layer for everything else to sit on top. Okay, so I primed the hull and most of the ship actually. And so I'm just going to start at the bottom with the whole red. Right, so we're going to put the 
some water effects in here. Now, I'm a big fan of using cotton wool for this. So what we'll do is got some um, water acrylic or acrylic water, whatever you call it, water effect acrylic. I'll put some in here. Um, now, what's going to this is going to do is that the water acrylic should dry actually quite clear, but the that's a bit too much. The cotton wool will dry within it, will stay within it, and it will give that whiteness and that impression of sort of granularity, if you will, or of liquidity. Um, just sort of painting into the to the acrylic. And it's a good way of um, filling in any gaps between the clay and the model as well. Try and get any sort of brushwork and I try and get that moving away and back from the ship because that's kind of where the water will be going. And you can just sort of primp it up a bit. So it looks like waves splashing against it. And remember, this isn't going to show white when it's finished. You're going to have to paint a lot of this, actually. But that cotton wool sort of structure on the inside will dry to make it look a bit more like water splashing up against it. Right, now for the wave crests, what I'm doing, I'm just going to put some of this acrylic water down first then i'm going to just put in some my old favorite cotton wool it's going to be interesting to try on this it's it's not very cooperative at first but put enough acrylic in it will be i just want to make sure you get all the fibers actually most of them lying flat now, what you really want to try and do here is establish that the, the wave is going this way. So this side can be quite sharp. In fact, it's good because it looks like it's breaking. Whereas this side needs to be really sort of molded in. Don't worry about the colors at the moment because this white will go clear. What you want though is for it to be smooth on this side, on the, the downward side of the wave, okay? And you can, if you just sort of gen gently push like this, you can see the, the cotton wool sort of bundles up here and naturally forms like a breaking wave. It's really nice, nice effect. And then just sort of fill in the rest around. Don't put too many brush strokes on. Once you put brush strokes on, do, Try and sort of break it up, you know, try, try, take stuff off the brush a bit. And, because you don't see many brush strokes on the sea. But you do see lots of little bits of waves and stuff like that. Okay. Then you've got to let this dry. But just add the acrylic till you're happy with how much is that and how it's blended in. Remember, we can always add more acrylic later. So underdo it rather than overdo it, I would say. And then leave that to dry. Okay. Then when you've got the acrylic dry, just dot along the crest of the waves with white paint, just to bring out that white forward edge of the of the water and just like drag a little bit down and just give it the impression it's actually moving um, you can sort of rinse it down a little bit and and you know water it down a little bit rather and just give a little bit of flavor of movement as well but make sure that that leading edge of where you've got waves breaking is painted white and then when that paint has dried and give it a while to dry go over it again with the acrylic because you want it to look like 
water you don't want it to look like white paint especially if you've got a matte, matte white paint of course go over it again with the, um, the acrylic okay so you can see how the decals you just sort of put them on wrap them around this bit of fold now let them settle on let them set properly you know give them an hour or so before you start to cut them off because otherwise they will start sliding off but make sure they're absolutely flat use a cotton bud like this just to make sure they're absolutely flattened down especially down at the at the fly as they say at the at the fold line make sure absolutely flattened down whilst they're drying so there we have HMS Devonshire in one six hundredth scale, a somewhat pimped up version of the 1963 FX kit re-released in 2022 as Vintage Classic. Pimping up being done with the help of photo etch and resin parts. Um, if I'd have just built the ship out of the box as it was, I'd have been happy enough. But Going to this other level, going with the resin parts so that uh, Wessex and the sea slug launcher on the back look very, very good. I'm building that sea slug out of photo, which would have been a nightmare. Pity they didn't do the radar in uh, resin as well, but I'm sure one day they will. Uh, the new gun turrets in resin, the gun barrels are so thin, they are so fiddly to put on, but when they are on, they actually look good. Everything looks much more to scale than it did as a regular plastic kit. The C diorama, I would do it differently if I did it again. I'd do, use a lot more references rather than my imagination, basically, for what the C looks like. But I'm still pretty happy with it. It's reasonably convincing. Never done one before. I probably will do one again in the future. Not sure about the amount of photo etching resin, whether I'd you know, commit to that again in the future, but it was worth it. The ones I've done was absolutely worth it. I'm really, really happy with it. Hope you are too. Do you know what? Taking all things into consideration, I'm actually really very, very happy with this little build. The, the photo etch could be a lot better, the resin could be better, the C could definitely be better, pretty much everything could be better, but my first go at all of this, I'm actually really quite proud of it, so there. And that's what matters when you're making models, what you're proud of, not what anyone else tells you you should be or shouldn't be proud of, so remember that if you have a go at all of this. If you've enjoyed the show, and I hope you have, please do remember, give it the old imperial thumbs up on the like button below, because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell there, and you will be notified of all my future content as it is released. Thank you so very much for watching today. Hope to see you again on the channel very soon. Take good care and goodbye.